Buenas tardes, estamos en vivo desde el Frontón México celebrando el segundo día de esta vigésimo novena edición del Círculo de Oro del Círculo Creativo. Y hoy estoy con una invitada internacional que además es súper agradable y maravillosa. Y bueno, aquí vuelvo a pedirle a Sofía Vergara que me ayude muchísimo porque I'm gonna be in English. Daniela Bogoricín. From Twitter, Brazil. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And I'm sorry I don't speak Spanish. Don't worry, but I promise that next time I'm going to do this in Spanish. Well, the thing is, we are like brothers I know. In, in language because we come from Latin. So yes. it's, uh, I think it's easier. I could try a portuñol, but I don't want to do it this don't time. Don't worry, don't worry, don't but worry. I, but I'll do it a, a Spanish next time, I promise. The thing is that you are comfortable and you, I don't know, like go fluid and yes yeah, don't worry, don't worry. and if i forgot a a, a, a word in english yes. i will do it in portuguese and i guarantee it's going to be the same in spanish yeah, totally totally yeah. yes okay so you just um give a lecture about uh it's brand building through purpose and empathy empathy yes, yes. that's that's amazing yes it's so connect with emotions and yeah so i wanted to talk a little bit about um for us to look at actually what's happening in the world. Uh, so when we receive a brief and when we receive a, a, a brand challenge, we always think about the more uh, comfortable way of resolving it and we don't think about what's happening in the world. So when we stop and then we listen to what's, ha what's happening in the world, we're actually listening to people and we're actually listening to movements. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, people not looking at them, but actually looking at what other people are doing and what people are saying. And these are uh, the best insights when you are putting together a brand. A brand. So sure. it's having empathy on not just looking at what you think about something, but actually what's happening in the world. Yeah, and totally because the brands are like use Twitter to connect with the customers and as you say, to get insights. Like you tweet about a, a brand and most of the time is the true because you don't have filters in yes. Twitter. So people are very honest and yes. sometimes rude and, <laughs> and raw. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the beauty of people, right? Yeah. Uh, so when we look at the platforms, when we look at social media, other platforms are look at me, but we are look at that. Yeah. And that's the beauty of what Twitter is about. So when brands are looking at what peop people are talking about, people are actually pointing out what's important to them. Mm -hmm. So how can brands be part of this? How can be brands be part of this ecosystem where they can embrace that conversation, they can be part of the conversation, and they can actually have a point of view of something that people are talking about? That's amazing. And also Twitter itself is brand. And yes. it's a, like a media. Yes. It's a an um, unofficial site of news and entertainment. Yes. How do you see Twitter, like the, the importance of Twitter in the world? So we always say Twitter is um, the platform that is about what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of points of views of different types of conversations. So if you, if you like soccer, for example, you have lots of points of views of soccer. If you like news and what's happening in politics, you have lots of different uh, views about that. And if you like fashion, for example, you have the same thing. So Twitter helps people understand not just what's happening in their bubble, but what's actually happening in the world. So uh, a way of using Twitter is a way of just making your um, your point of view of something much broader than just what you talk to your friends or when you just talk to your family, for example. And I, I know that the, the, the users from Latin America are growing and growing a lot. and growing. <laughs> yeah. They are like a huge and strong community. Yeah. How do you see the, the future of Twitter like in Brazil and in Mexico? I think we are, we are um, and I always like to talk about LATAM because we are very passionate um, Uh, 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 people, we are very passionate and we have lots of opinion and every time that we talk about something we have so much passion around it so every time that we put our passion in there I feel that Twitter can be a great platform for you to actually talk about what's happening in the world uh, so if it's about politics what act, what is your opinions about what's happening in the world in politics and we, we are facing this uh, difference and this in this uh, uh, movement around politics around around uh, sports around music uh, everywhere so I feel that the future for Twitter and Latam is uh, people are, will be more honest and people will talk about what actually uh, is happening in the world and what actually it's important to them well, that's amazing yeah. and for for finishing this yes what parts of this 
trip to Mexico City to experience like lively, what do you take back to Brazil to Twitter to take and to I don't know to nourish your conversations in Twitter? That's a, such an interesting question because I feel that even though we are so apart um, geographically, we're so so common. Like the people in Mexico are so similar from the people in Brazil. We have the same um, conversations, we have the same thoughts, we are so passionate about what we believe, and I feel that that's what I'm bringing uh, on my bag when I come back. It's, it's not because we are geographically so apart, because we're so similar in so many ways. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank Daniela. Thank you. I hope you enjoy Mexico City. I am. Thank you. Thank you.